you know, look, look at Meta, right? This thing is an inch away, technically, of going all the way back down to this 153 level. Again, you saw a short-term expiration. This is where it needs to Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a great start to your weekend. Hope everybody had a good uh, trade trading week and hopefully everybody is healthy. I guess, again, that's the name of the game. So let's talk about the tape. So we've been, we've been kind of going sideways. We've been watching the video for the last you know, two weeks or so, you kind of know that we've been just trapped in this range here over and over and over again. And the, the good news about this range was the longer, you know, the longer something sits above a channel, the higher probability it finally follows through. But the problem with that is what that was on the surface was every time we had a chance to go higher, we had pretty good data to go higher. They kind of failed, and there was no bigger uh, there was no bigger ball drop than if you guys remember on what was it last Thursday, last Wednesday, whatever it was, we had Microsoft cut guidance right pre market. Uh, everything started coming in very very aggressively, and then slowly but surely the bulls the bid got you know the bids started appearing, and the bulls you know bought the dip right, and there was no greater. Uh, data that you could have possibly have gotten no, nothing more bullish than after a consolidation you have the arguably the the, the, the biggest and, and best company on the planet uh, or at least top three to turn around forecast lower guidance and the bulls take the, the market higher but the problem was the next three days the market gave back those gains and then it started becoming a little bit of worrisome but before the worrisome part happened everybody was waiting for that CPI number right and slowly but surely, the market started moving, started moving. We had some pretty decent days towards the back end of the week, Wednesday and Thursday. And we turn around and say, well, probably the CPI number will, will finally give us a little more clarity. And the one thing that the bulls didn't do was progress on the 20-day reclaim uh, that they did on May the 26th. And that was very, very important of note because eventually data right and eventually the reality of where we were and, if, and again if you've been watching this video for even the last several months i'm not even talking about the last five months that we lost the 50-day moving average i've been kind of reiterating the point over and over and over again we could rally as much as we want right we, we could rally and we saw periods of of really good value uh especially right here in february right we had the three-week rally and this really nice uh distribution rally that we've had but at the end of the day we were still below the 50-day moving average and nothing again nothing longer term happens if you can't reclaim the 50-day moving average because that's that's kind of the the line in the sand of longer term sentiment the five days the shorter term sentiment the 50 days gives you a wider range of a longer term sentiment at the end of the day it's exactly what happened uh off the rally that we had in march we had this rally the bulls just couldn't uh just couldn't really progress to the next level of supply and the end of the day we kind of know what happened on thursday a big reversal on Thursday session and Friday CPI number came. The, the one thing, you know, the one thing that I'm, I'm still a little marveled in is the reaction to the CPI, okay? And not, not for stock prices, from the, the overall data. Unless you've never, unless you haven't been uh, filling up your gas tank over the last year or been to the supermarket and realized milk is not $4.99 anymore, Milk is $10.99 now, right? Gas prices are not $3.25 for premium. They're $5.50 for premium. So unless you have been living under a rock in Main Street, uh, Main Street America, or even anywhere, even parts of the world, you kind of knew that the CPI number was going to demonstrate higher f food and energy prices. So there wasn't a shock. And I think more people were shocked that we sold off than the actual data. And because if you look at what happened the previous day, and this was, you know, this was kind of the nail in the coffin of the bulls. This one candle, okay, which was Thursday session, you know, it sold off. The Nasdaq was down like 350 points. And what this one candle did was it wiped out the distribution for the first two weeks. 
having its first close below the 20-day moving average, which we finally reclaimed on May the 26th. That was already the bearish thing. And if, and again, if you follow me on social media, especially on Twitter the previous day, right on that close, you know, you basically said, I basically said, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be sell buys. How can you possibly bull buy, be bull buys going into, uh, going into Friday session? And, you know, the only thing that Friday did was really exaggerate what the Thursday candle did. And now we have a very, very aggressive move down. If you look at the week's totals, pretty, you know, pretty staggering. You know, you had nearly uh, 6% declines all across the board. You had nearly 3% declines. NASDAQ actually lost uh, over 3% on Friday. But what it did do, technically speaking, was set up, again, a date with the bottom of this channel here of 283. And again, if you believe in the theory of stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand, well, again, here's your next demand, right? So if it stopped on Thursday right on demand, and you believe in that theory, then that stocks go to the next demand. Well, here's the next demand of 283, uh, 283 on the lower Bollinger Band. And if you watched Wednesday's video, we said, well, I said, excuse me, I said at least what Wednesday did was, was giving us a definitive line in the sand. So if you go back to the last video before this one was the Wednesday video, I said at least if we know now definitive line in the sand was this 302 level. And once it crossed that 302, the, you know, the end game short term was going to be very, very challenging uh, for the bulls. We had the nasty sell off and now we are poised for a move back uh, to 283. And the, the one thing that is is going to be kind of a counter argument from what, I, what I'm saying is, I will say this much, I was very, very impressed with the smaller cap group this week. Uh, usually I don't comment on it because they usually have, you know, kind of a two week run here and then like eight months later, they'll have another two week run there. But it, they, I will say was there's been some really strong moves in the small cap sector. So the one argument that you can turn around and say, well, how can market sentiment be so sour considering people are really bidding up a lot of these small cap names? Um, and that's a very, very valid argument. Because again, at the end of the day is if there is speculation money, flowing into a specific group, well, how can you turn around and say, well, there's going to be a buyer strike in the overall market. But at the end of the day, technical analysis, technical analysis, and as good as speculation money is right now in the smaller cap group. Matter of fact, if you look at uh, the IWM, for example, right, they had a really, really strong run, a lot of strong, a bigger, stronger run than in the S&P uh, than the Nasdaq in the last in the last three four days, but you could you could quickly see what happened in the last three days. So even there, slowly but surely, you're getting a little bit of a sour uh, a sour in sentiment. And now, if the IWM takes out this 177 level, it's going to pretty much do the, exactly the same thing that we're looking at uh, for the S and P and uh, the Nasdaq uh, 100, probably getting a, a test. Uh, back to this 172 level. And if you look at uh, the SPX, for example, right? Let me look at the SPX, just want to give you an idea. If you look at the SPX, for example, you're gonna see exactly the same thing, uh, mirror image of the NASDAQ, right? It lost uh, that 40.39 on a close. Uh, and now we have room all the way up to, uh, all the way down to uh, 38.54. That correlates with the bottom range here on May the 20th, that was roughly uh, 3810. So yeah, the equities, you know, equities going into this week, you know, they're going to need, you're going to need a really, really strong move by investors to kind of shake off what happened last Thursday and Friday. Uh, Tesla after the close, as, as I'm sure many of you guys know, um, announced a three for one stock split. Uh, you know, the, the, the reaction was a little muted. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if you look at usually when a stock comes out with a stock split, you know, they, they usually would really take off really well. And again, it was up like seven, eight points after the close, considering it was down 22 points um, you know, in the regular session. That's not exactly great. But again, you never know how the investors are going to look at Tesla for a split. Maybe the reaction is a little bit muted because it already had a recent split uh, well, recently, I feel like Austin Powers a second ago. Uh, but yeah, you know, look, I, I think the key going into uh, Monday's session is we, we want to see how these stocks are going to react. Personally, I believe that any rally, if you look at, you know, any tech stock, and I'll show you in a second, if you look at Amazon, right? If you look at the 60 minute view on Amazon, oops, excuse me, e signal still hasn't uh, really correlated here since the split, but I'll show you here in a second. Give me a second here. 
So if you look at Amazon's chart, right? If you look, you know, any single time now it hits supply, it's getting rejected. I'll tell you one thing, uh, really aggressive, ever since the split, you got really aggressive put buying coming in for next week. They were coming for uh, the 105 puts, they were coming for the 103 puts in very, very uh, aggressive size. I personally think if it starts losing Friday's channel, you could get a move back down to that 103, 105 level. Big, big institutional money flow on Amazon. Even, uh, you know, even a name like, for example, like uh, Facebook, Meta, right? I don't want to freak anybody out, right? So Meta, um, you know, look at Meta, right? This thing is an inch away, technically, of going all the way back down to this 153 level. Again, you saw a short-term expiration. This is where, you, you, you know, this is where you kind of say, follow the smart money or follow the institutional money. They were coming for this week's and next week's uh, 155 uh, puts on Meta. I mean, look, and this is where they're getting these bets from. That's the bottom of the channel here of the linear regression line. Uh, a name like Apple, for example, as well, right? I mean, you know, all these stocks are breaking down uh, pretty, pretty aggressively. And it kind of still goes into the theory of this was just a, a bear market rally, just the same way we had uh, all the way going back to January from March uh, 15 that ended into supply. And unfortunately, this last round of, of, of rallies just, just wasn't strong enough. Great consolidation. Uh, after the reclaiming of the 20-day moving average, but as you can possibly, see, well, you could possibly see with your eyes, uh, it just wasn't strong enough to get that next move forward. And now we're getting back uh, to the bottom of the range. So, you know, going into this week, look, is it possible we have you know, some sort of relief rally on Monday? Yeah, I guess, right? But again, you've seen such big, heavy technical damage, especially last uh, two trading sessions that, that again, the value now is back to the downside. And, you know, somebody asked me on social media, are, are you bearish for this week? I mean, how can you, if you look at charts, how can you possibly have a good, a good vibe? Again, re remember a dead cat bounce is not the same as stock prices going higher, right? Stocks go up is completely different than stocks going higher. You could have a stock that just lost $30 on Friday, go up $6 on the day. But that's apples to hand grenades. One is telling you the macro view. One is telling you the micro view. So we could get a, a, a dead cat bounce on Monday or Tuesday. But the point is there's been so much technical damage, especially in the technology group, that the value for this week, at least the start of the week, uh, will be to the downside. Uh, I think I have pretty much 100% sell bias um, at least setups initially going into this week uh, to the downside. And we'll see how it plays out, right? That, that's the coolest part about, uh, about trading, especially uh, when you're trading day to day. You can switch gears very, very quickly. Your opinion is based on technical data, not where you think is going to go. But again, it does help to have a clean pocket, right? A visual of what you believe can happen next. And if you look at all these charts, I mean, they're, they're setting up all the same way. Uh, I like this dash. Look at dash. Look at the bottom of the channel here. Uh, you know, if, if this thing starts getting down to this bottom channel and confirming, uh, this thing should go lower. You know, we talked about Meta, right? We talked about Meta, big, big channel coming up here with the 155s being bet uh, going into this week. So again, institutional money flow is dictating the chart price. Uh, NVIDIA got hit, semiconductors obviously uh, been very, very weak. They were the first group to roll over. You could see, you know, NVIDIA has a possible uh, destination to 160. Uh, taking AMAT, for example, is another semiconductor with it as well. Is about to break down. A name like FIVE that came out with earnings, right? Came out with earnings. They defended the bottom of the channel last week on the earnings. But look, I mean, look at this channel here. If this thing starts... Uh, violating this bottom channel here. They already had a catalyst. They had a weak quarter. Maybe this thing uh, starts coming in as well. And Docu, right? Look at Docu. Docu got got killed on earnings, right? They were down pretty big. Uh, they defended, check this out. They defended the bottom of this channel here four times. I mean, that's what I'm watching for this week. If this thing, if this thing, I, I'm hoping this Docu has a dead cat bounce on Monday so they could get off of SSR. So, because if later in the week, this thing starts taking down the bottom of the channel and you can see these Bollinger Bands getting tighter and tighter. If it starts losing this bottom Bollinger Band, it's going to have a next round uh, of selling as well. So, you know, look, I, I think the data is the data. I think, again, like I said, if you're living underneath a rock, uh, if you're shocked of what happened uh, with the C with the May CPI, you know, you know, kind of kind of unless you haven't been to a supermarket or been, been to a gas uh, station in the last, uh, you know, six months or a year or so, you kind of know what's already out there. So I, I think people are going to look at uh, the CPI as kind of 
the result of why we sold. No, the, the CPI uh, was the result of technical damage, what we had on Thursday session, closing below the 20-day moving average that we worked so hard to reclaim on 526. So going into this week, guys, uh, obviously any rally, I have zero interest in, um, you know, until they, they start reclaiming. If the Qs can start reclaiming back 300, then obviously we start going back at least short term to the buy signal. But anything below that, again, starts another, another cycle that ultimately at some point this week, uh, I do believe we could get a 283 area. Now, the question is, what happens if we gap down to this 283 level, right? Because that's always on the table. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see a dead cat relief bounce if we gap down to 283, trap some shorts on this Bollinger Band and have a rally up, right? That becomes a whole different uh, different situation. But assuming if we do gap up on Friday, if do we do gap up on Monday, the last thing you want to do is, ha is buy stocks pre-market or opening range highs that got destroyed on Thursday and Friday. Remember, again, for the most basic thing of technical analysis, for a stock to move higher, not to go higher, because people, you know, people get confused. People turn around and say, well, if a stock goes red to green, can't you buy it? Of course you can buy it, but red to green is not a technical weight. Red to green is basically red to green. That's all it is. Uh, for a stock to go higher, right? Higher, broad higher. It has to take out the previous day's high. If the market wants to go lower, it has to take out the previous day's low. And that's the most basic part of technical analysis. So if we do have a dead cat bounce, remember, there's a reason why it's called a dead cat bounce, not going higher. So going into this week, again, sell bias to start. We'll see what we are. The most important part is, again, trade both sides of the market. Uh, don't paint yourself in a corner. Don't paint yourself with bias. I'm wrong all the time, right? The key is, again, not to be, you could be wrong as much as you want theoretically, right? With an opinion, just don't be pigheaded enough and being a mule to be wrong financially. All right, guys, have a great, wonderful weekend. Get some rest. Hope everybody's healthy and happy and having a wonderful summer. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.